All right, welcome back, guys. Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound, bringing you back again for more coin videos. And uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about storage and organization. A good buddy of mine, Jason, has serious issues trying to figure out what to do with all of his coins. Now, he's an avid roll hunter. He goes through many boxes a week. And as a new collector, let me go ahead and adjust this a little bit. Uh, he's having a hard time kind of sorting things and doesn't know how to do it. And hopefully this video can kind of shed some light. So let's kind of take you guys back. A lot of you probably have, well, done and used the red solo cup method. Especially if you're a roll hunter, you probably started out with a few of these. And uh, the idea with these cups and any cup for that matter, you know, um, is that you're sorting your coins as they're coming out of the rolls, maybe by date, by decade. Um, and the big reason why is you're going to end up going through them. Uh, like me personally, I like to do piles all on my desk and my desk is only yay big. You know, it's, it's not, not even that big, but doing the cups allows you to stack more coins higher. Um, so that way. You, you could uh, work with a lot more for virtually less. Um, but the one thing that I can tell you is that these things, I mean, you're going to start out with maybe five to 10 of these right off the bat. Maybe you're going to do all 1980s Lincolns, all 2000s Lincolns, things like that. Okay, I'm just throwing Lincoln cents out there because it's like one of the most widely hunted coins uh, out there. Uh, but you're going to sort all your coins using this method. Now, of course, the Red Solo Cup has a pretty long storied history going way back into the 80s and 90s, early Americana. You know, I talked to my daughter and she said, yeah, way back in the, the, the 80s, maybe feel old. But anyways, um, yeah, you guys remember stacking a whole bunch of these uh, into kind of like a V pattern and playing a little ping pong, if you know what I mean. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> you got Nickelback playing in the background and all that great stuff. Ah, the memories. Uh, but we all started with these, all right? We chugged along, um, you know, if someone ended up scoring their ping pong in these. But as we grew older, instead, we were doing shots. So kind of same difference. You could do varieties in here. You could do just solid dates or decades in here. But anyways, that's that. Uh, so... I could probably attest for a lot of people that you're going to start out on a workspace that's relatively manageable. You could fit probably 10, 15 of these cups all on your desk and then you're going to have a spot in front of you where you're able to go through the coins, deal with the wrappers, things like that. Um, but if you're not careful, you're not storing and organizing and classifying your coins right from the get-go, things can get a little bit out of hand. So let's just say, and I'm not saying that I was one of these people, but uh, okay, I was. Uh, but let's say we end up going from our desk, moving to the dining room table because it's a lot bigger. And now we went from the 15 red solo cups to about 40 of them. And then here come walks in your wife or your significant other, your husband or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever. And it's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Can you clean this sh stuff up? Um, so, yeah, we've all been there. We've all done that. And even if you're a single person, you know, having all these cups around, stacked around, and if you don't label them with a Sharpie to designate what's in there, that could be a problem furthermore. Because um, you're going to have to go through, the, uh, go through the coins and kind of figure out why did I put this all in this one cup. So, yeah, that's where we're kind of at here. Um, and it, you know, using these is a great temporary solution, but it has no long-term benefits. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the long-term benefits and our boy, Jason. Well, he has kind of an issue. He's finding way too much stuff. All right. And a lot of stuff had come out of the last three, four years of coinage, which thankfully, you know, the pandemic kind of made reality. There was a lot of errors and varieties that have shown up into the scene all minor, some very major, uh, but, you know, our boy Jason had been coming across a bunch, a buttload of, well, you name it, 
some of those drooling die chips, some strike throughs, various other different types of anomalies, and he's got more than he knows what to do with. He knows eventually he wants to sell them, but in the interim, he wants to store them. So here are a few options that I think are going to work out really well to pare down what you have in the Red Solo Cup kind of investment inventory that you have all over the place. And let's go ahead and begin organizing and storing these, okay? So if you're a person with a budget, okay, you don't want to particularly spend a bunch of money to uh, kind of package things up. Well, here's where the easy part kind of comes into play. Now, if you're a coin, coin roll hunter, you probably have a number of these box anyways, all right? These are the bank boxes direct from the bank that has said coins in there. So these are going to be um, a, a great storage uh, container for what we're going to do with these coins. So our boy Jason has a bunch of these little minor errors. By themselves, they probably sell for about three to five bucks. Normally, I would say, you know, go ahead and sell them. All right. And you could sell each one of them back a year ago for probably 10 to $15. Now they don't command so much. So he knows he wants to move these eventually, but he doesn't have time to do them because he's going through the roll hunts. He's still going through all these boxes that he has. So let's go ahead and focus on one of the cheapest and probably most of the time it's going to be free coin wrappers like this. Now this one right here I bought on Amazon. Actually, this was gifted to me and, uh, awesome. I use these all the time, but the paper wrappers that you could get at the bank, as long as you're a customer, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be free. They're going to end up giving you however much you need. These are going to be important. And the big reason why is that as you're accumulating quantity, whether you're going and looking for errors and varieties, or there's a bunch of people that are actually stacking pre-1983 copper Lincolns, whatever you decide to do, utilize those free paper wrappers that you get at the bank and then simply use a pen. I know I got a pen around here. I, I go through, you know, a few pens per month and then write down on the side of the paper roll exactly what you have in there. And then with these boxes, I would say, you know, you could go to, to the bank and pick up a number of these. So as long as they're empty, you know, they're going to give you a few of them. Uh, but take the boxes and it, because it says quarters, doesn't mean you have to put quarters in there. I've used these for Lincoln cents before. Uh, and you can fit a whole lot more in there rather than just 50 rolls. Um, and then use that. And then on the end, you could actually, and what I, what I do is I use a piece of masking tape, put that on there because I could always remove that and then write down with a Sharpie exactly what's in there. Quarter errors, copper Lincoln cents. You know, with the copper Lincoln cents, I like to package them up in $25 face value lots um, because, you know, there's going to become a day where you're going to be able to melt those, but not now because it's illegal. But um, the copper coin inventory, okay, they do have value, all right? So it's, um, it's imperative that you begin to do the storage and organization right from the get-go. And especially if you have a lot of minor stuff, all right? Because what you don't want to do is package up each and in each individual single coin in these holders like this, which by the way, these Mylar flips are not particularly cheap. For a hundred of these, whether you go through Lighthouse or some other company, you're gonna end up paying anywhere from 20 to $30 for a hundred pack of these, and they will not last. They will go just like that. So for all the minor stuff, take advantage of those paper rolls, um, write down on the side of the paper roll once you get them packed and um, all that great stuff. What exactly is in there? Washington quarter, put in the date, 2022, drooling George die chips as an example. And then go from there. Just keep going. And the cool thing is when you're packaging up your box, it could be anything in here. You can have kind of like a mishmash of errors and varieties. But as long as you label those roll papers with what you have, then you're in good shape. Now, let's say you have things that are a little bit more valuable, okay? Here's what I personally would do. Now, I showed you the Mylar flips, which, you know, are a great idea if you have coins that are worth about $20 and higher. But, guys, 
There's nothing wrong with these cardboard two by twos that you have to staple shut. There is nothing wrong with these for the cheaper coins. Grab yourself a double, triple, or quadruple row box. You can buy them on Amazon. Local coin shops will have these for probably $10 to $20, depending on what you get. They even have the boxes like this for graded slab coins. But for this particular exercise, we have a double row box. I've had this one for about 20 years, and I have about 10 of these that are completely full of coins. So use these. Use those two by two holders, which by the way are like a dime for like 10 dozen. They're so cheap. You could get them on eBay. You could buy them locally at a coin shop. I would probably stay away from like Barnes and Noble and a few places like that because they charge way too much for a hundred pack of those. But use those. Those are for coins that have a little bit more interest, a little bit more value. I would say anything $5 and up, no more than about $20, $25 in value. This is where you're going to get a lot of kind of like handsy work time, all right? This is something that if you've accumulated a bunch of something and you need to start with your storage, it's going to take some work. This is not an overnight thing where you're going to, you know, plan on working on it for a few hours. But at the same time, you need to begin to get a little bit of a handle on the storage and organization or else it'll never happen. All right. Other things that you could do, which I don't personally recommend for a lot of, uh, you know, just miscellaneous, low value type of coins, Ziploc bags, but make sure you're using like the freezer um, strength type of bags because they're double, triple the thickness of a standard sandwich bag. And you're going to put, be able to put more in there. You're going to be able to label it on that white, white area on the bag of that, um, of what you have in there. Okay. And that's, that's kind of like, it's not even free. And that's the thing about using the, um, the bank wrappers and box method is you could get those for free. Or if you have, if they don't have those boxes, go to the post office and grab a couple of the medium flat rate boxes. I believe they're double walled thickness. I might be wrong, but they're corrugated and they're going to handle a lot of strength. As a matter of fact, those are the boxes that you would use to send out a $25 bank box of, say, copper pennies if you sold it on eBay. So those things work out pretty well, but you could also stack a bunch of rolls in there and do the same thing. Now, when we get to this point, obviously you have to designate an area where to stack all these because if you have a lot of something, obviously you're going to need the square footage. You're going to need all of that to store them. So make sure you find a cool, dry place to store all of your coins. Make sure it's free from any bugs, dirt. So the garage is probably out of the question in most spots, especially if you're on the East Coast or somewhere in the South where uh, moisture and uh, so you guys some, have some pretty gnarly bugs in certain areas of the South. You wanna make sure that you keep those away from your coins. All right, so, uh, you know, as kind of like a, a, a word of caution, uh, you know, this is something that is uh, more of a long-term solution but when you get to that point where you're ready to sell some of these and move on from them, it's going to make it a whole heck of a lot easier. And then after that, you have to decide, okay, how do I want to liquidate these? A lot of these minor coins and errors and varieties that are being found today from the last five years, a lot of that has to be um, monetized online on eBay. This is something that you can't waltz into a coin shop and say, hey, I saw all these on YouTube. Some uh, some joker named Sean on Blue Ridge Silverhound says these are worth something. They're worth something online because people buy those. And besides, some of those errors and varieties like the drooling George die chips, people are doing what they call progression sets. So they're finding the smallest die chip and then they're finding a few examples of the progression till it gets to the big nasty kind of like, you know, uh, dude has herpes level of, you know, dye chips and then sell them that way. But you got to make sure that you know how to do the photography and all that stuff. That's a lesson for a different day. I did de dedicate a few videos on how to take good solid photos with just your smartphone. Go ahead and search for that in my um, uh, tool chest of various videos. There's like 1300 videos uh, at your disposal. And I did talk about photography in a few of those, but that's what I wanted to talk about. That's quite kind of like the quick and dirty method 
of storing and organizing your coins. Um, and again, it's on the cheap. That, that's what we're playing with here, especially for a lot of you that are uh, casually getting into the hobby and you don't want to spend a ton of money doing so then resort to these methods. You're going to end up in the long run uh, thanking me um, and you're not going to get that funny stare from your spouse because you don't want that and neither do I because I care about you guys. So that's going to go ahead and do it. Keep in mind, we have our next Whatnot Coin Auction tomorrow, March 22nd. That's a Wednesday, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time in the evening, 8 o'clock p.m., Eastern Standard Time. Links will be down below along with the referral link. So if you haven't signed up to earn your $15 in credit to use on your first order, go ahead and sign up with the referral link down below in the description box or pinned in the comment section. But that's it. I'm out of here. Get your organization down tight so that way you can have a sane life style free of clutter. All right. Take care, guys. Enjoy the hobby. And I'll see you on the next coin video. So long.